the Lord is worthy and deserving of all that praise, right? Welcome this morning. Uh, hope you're glad to be here. Uh, excited uh, to open up God's Word. Uh, if you're visiting or regular attender, no matter, right? We're glad to have you and want to be good stewards of having you with us this morning. If you want to go ahead and begin turning your Bibles to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 is where we're going to be parked at this morning. Uh, I know that there's lots of stuff uh, in your bulletin, right? I know there's lots going on, so make sure that uh, you pay close attention to that and we'll cover all of those announcements um, after a while. So, Excited about that. Been beautiful weather the last several days. Thanks for anybody and everybody that had a part in helping out. I know that that'll be talked about later on as well with Sorghum Festival, but always a, a great opportunity to be out in the community and uh, loving on people as well as doing a little fundraising for children and youth. So great time in that yesterday. Uh, definitely appreciate um, uh, all the help putting that together and pulling it off. Um, as well, right? I definitely want to remind you um, about tonight, uh, 5.30. Please make sure that you're paying close attention that time. We have backed that up just a little bit as we want to make sure that we're giving ourselves uh, plenty of time. Uh, so please come and join us tonight, 5.30, um, as we're kicking off a small group, a new Bible study that we're going to be going through. Even if you haven't come, um, we are first time tonight, right? Last week, we just did a general overview View, kind of getting things prepared so um, please come come join us uh, tonight excited as uh, we experience God together for sure um, this morning uh, I really really had other intentions of preaching a different text uh, and then the last several days um, a lot of a lot of things uh, just spun around a different way which brought me to second uh, Corinthians so Please, please hold tight. Uh, it's uh, it's what I really feel being pressed upon with the Lord, and I know inside of our our own home, we um, we we're not big TV watchers um, in any way, uh, and if we do spend any time watching TV, uh, most of our stuff is on DVD. Right? We usually just buy uh, something that we want to watch, um, and most of what me and Kimberly watch are old murder mystery shows right so we are a huge come on i know y'all gonna hate on me here right we're huge matlock fans right um we're a hu huge murder she wrote uh so we kind of buy all these dvds right and that's usually uh our kind of time together watching tv is watching those old shows because most of those are good clean entertainment uh and it's always intriguing trying to figure out um, what's going to take place and uh, this week um, th the Lord after just looking at some of that every one of these shows almost always seem to come back to some sort of courtroom session right um, and someone's on trial and we're trying to figure out whether it's Matlock the wrong person is trying to be a uh, be put in jail or another show but it always comes to this point of cross-examination right where they've started out and the prosecutors they're trying to plead their case in order to prove these charges and then we have have this cross examination time right where where the other attorneys get an opportunity to state their case ask their questions really look at things from a a another advantage and another viewpoint and man that really just spoke to my spoke to my heart this week especially in some of my own personal prep time and own reading time and then even having lots of conversations with lots of unchurched people. I spend a lot of my day, right, you all know, at public work, uh, where the biggest overwhelming majority of the people that I'm around do not attend church. Uh, which always brings to lots of great conversation. And I feel like that I'm almost inside of one of these shows because there always comes this point after they have grilled me and asked me all these questions where I in tune, right, get to do this cross-examination, if you will. 
and, and, and looking through lots of scripture this week, right, I, I found myself getting back here into 2 Corinthians, and this is the, the second letter that Paul has written to the church there. This one is a lot more detailed as far as his love and his passion, right? The first letter, we know that he's combating a lot of drama going on in the church, and if you've not spent any time studying uh, the book of Corinthians first or second, I encourage you to do so, right? There's lots that Paul is addressing, but we're going to be coming to the end, this final chapter, if you will, um, and we're, we're going to see Paul begin to uh, kind of wrap up this letter in a way that I hope this morning um, that we can really glean from uh, in our own personal lives, especially right here in Bethlehem, right? So if you want to stand, I'm going to read this entire chapter. If you're not physically able to stand, it's okay. Uh, just stay parked. I hope that you have a copy of God's Word. If not, there's one right in front of you. If you don't personally own one, See someone before you leave, and I make sure that you get one uh, before you head out. Starting in verse 1, it says, This is the third time I'm coming to you. Every charge must be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. I warn those who sinned before and all the others, I warn them now while absent, as, as I did when present on my second visit, that if I come again, I will not spare them. Since you seek proof that Christ is speaking in me, he is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you. For he was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. For we are also, uh, for we also are weak in him, but in dealing with you, we will live with him by the power of God. Verse 5, examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves, or do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test? I hope that you will find out that we have not failed the test, but we pray to God that you may not do wrong. Not that we appear to have the mind or to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. Your restoration is what we pray for. For this reason, I write these things while I'm away from you, that when I come, I may not have to, uh, to be severe in my use of authority that the Lord has given me for the building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pray. Lord, we, we do come to you right now. We're, we're truly, truly thankful for this moment and this time. And Lord, gathering together, and whether that's been in a small group this morning, Lord, or through uh, just the worship aspect of singing praise to your name. But Lord, we're, we're unpacking, Lord, taking it a step further and diving into your word. And I am just praying right now that your word will, will come and do what only it can do, taking it directly from my mouth and depositing in the hearts of those that are here, those that are watching or watch later on, Lord, we're just praying that uh, you would do an eternal work right now. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Right, Paul is Paul is expressing a lot of things here this morning, right? And there is some really, really difficult things that have been taking place here in the church. And Paul is writing this out of concern and passion, right? This is his pastoral letter, right? He's he's really pouring somewhat of his heart out um, in, into this church because uh, there's a lot that's taking place, and he's really kind of wanting to 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 get a lot of this under control. Right, A lot of things that are taking place that are very good, but there are also a lot of things that are going on that's not godly, right? And he's warning them, hey, if I, if I come back to visit you all, I'm going to have to execute some discipline, and, and he's wanting them to know that I'm going to confront you, right? I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to make it public, right? I want to bring you before the church, right, before the church leaders, and if it has to come down to it, right, 
I'm going to ask you to be excommunicated from the church. Now, I know, I know even as I make those statements, we have all kinds of feelings rise up on the inside of us. And I know this morning is not 100% about church discipline, so nobody, nobody take it that way, right? Even as important as church discipline is, please, please hear that out, right? I don't want to, I don't want to minimize that, right? Because the church is where we maintain order, right? And we do that in a biblical way, and there is a time and a place for that. And Paul is just re revisiting this and even encouraging, and I, I want you to hear these words right out of the gate, right? I, I don't want any of this, as Paul says, right, for it to be a tear down. I want this to be an encouragement every time we gather together that God's word, even as sharp, as hurtful sometimes as they pierce us, that we would walk away encouraged. And if, and if we struggle with that, if we, if we maybe don't see that, then I encourage you, please come. Let's conversate. Let's look at God's Word because I want you to know that I'm in no way, shape, fashion, or form saying that I am perfect and you are wrong. And I've got it all together. I really want us as a body of believers where God grabbed a hold of my heart is in verse number five. Examine yourself. Right, this this word today, right? Cross examination. God's speaking right now. He's turning the tables and he's asking for this spiritual checkup. Something that I truly believe. How how many people do a yearly checkup with your local doctor? Come on. If you have health insurance, they pay for it, right? Once a year, preventative. Doesn't cost you anything. You get to go, right? There's all kinds of things that's covered for by, by that. Please, I encourage you. It's good. It's what we should be doing, right? And the older we get, we know we spend more time at the doctor, but that's another sermon, right? Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Who is Paul talking to here? This is the church. He's not talking to anybody that's outside of the faith, right? He's not talking to anybody outside. So this morning, right, I want you to understand as Paul is writing this, as we're hearing these words, we, we have to do the same thing. Test yourselves. It's time for a spiritual checkup, right, to see where we're at in the faith. I hope that this is something that you do regularly, whether it's daily or weekly or monthly, right? That there is a time in your faith that you're taking a moment to say, hey, wait a minute, how is my life lining up with God and his word? Please hear me out. I, I'm, I'm not asking you to line up with the pastors or with, or with someone on staff, right? Or with someone that is a teacher or a deacon or someone in leadership, I want you to see according to God's word, right? We should be able to see Christ's presence, his power in our life. We, we should be able to, to not only see that, but others should be able to see that we're growing closer to God. And you see, that's the reason why there's a lot of conversation going on. That's the reason why there's a lot of things that's taking place, not, not just in our community, right, or in our church, but across the globe with church in and of itself. You see, there's a, a lot of things that are taking place that Paul was addressing then that, that are still play, taking place now that are not of God, and the church is turning a blind eye to it. I know, right? I, I know that it's uncomfortable as we, we think about these things, right? But we as believers should be seeing ourselves grow in the Lord. Now, how do we know that little Charlie up here is growing? Come on, somebody shout it out. How do we know that he's growing? Now, I'm not talking about his belly hanging out of his shirt. <laughs> Charlie's walking. Things he does, right? We hear a lot more chatter coming out, right? We're seeing lots more chompers inside of his mouth, right? He's getting more and more teeth. We're seeing Charlie grow right before our very eyes. Does anybody question that Charlie's growing? No, right? We're seeing, we're seeing it before our very eyes. 
This is exactly the way that our, that our lives should be on display as believers in Christ. And I, I, I know even as I say that, right, that, that some of us are in a place right now that maybe we feel like we're in a rut. Right, that maybe we're we're not where we want to be, right, and we really don't know how to get to where we want to be, and we're almost just stuck. We we're we're in this place, and if that's you this morning, pray praise God that you're here. I'm praying that God would move you from that place. But I want you to hear the words, right, that that we see from Scripture that if we're not growing closer to God. If we're if we're not daily walking with Him, if we're not spending time with Him, if we're not growing in our faith, then we're actually drawing further and further away from Him. You see, we, we can't just put Charlie on standstill right now, right? We can't just say, okay, Charlie, one year and how many ever days old, that's enough. <laughs> right? We, we, we would love to keep him in this little cute, little huggable, lovable little stage, but we know that the terrible twos are coming. No, just kidding. <laughs> We're not going to speak that on him. He's going to be a good boy. He's going to be a good boy. We, we know that he's going to continue to grow right, and he's going to continue to be loved and fed, and all those things that are going to help him grow. We would, we would never say that Charlie's going to start going backwards at one years old. No, we, we know that he's going to be moving closer, right? He's going to be growing up. That's, that's our walk in Christ. Do you not realize this about yourselves, Paul says, that Jesus Christ is in you? Do you, do you hear those words? And I, I think it's something that we, we tend to forget as believers in Christ that, that, that we are we're in Christ. As a matter of fact, it's what we just looked at in part of this new Sunday night group, right? John 15, right? That we're, we're abiding in Christ and he's abiding in us. It's what we're wanting to see take place. Paul is reminding the, this group of believers, right, that, that Christ is in you unless indeed you fail to meet the test. Now, I know in those words, right, that, that they, they, they almost make me feel a certain way, right? And I, I truly believe that Paul did not think that, that, that the people that he was writing to here that were lost, Right? But I, I think that he's calling to attention that their actions were actually so bad that maybe it was allowing people to begin to question whether or not that maybe they were truly saved. I know. I know even as your pastor, right, and the well good group of people that are sitting before me, but if we are to start looking at statistics of people who claim to be believers in the church, we would see that most people now say that as high as 80% of people who attend church may not truly be followers of Christ. I didn't come up with those stats. Billy Graham quoted them for years. <laughs> but now Barna and lots of other well-known church they're continuing to show that, that maybe there are a lot of people who, who think one thing and maybe it, it, it doesn't quite line up. That maybe our actions, the lives that we're living, maybe that it, it's not only causing you to question, but maybe others around us are saying what's really going on. And I know, I know that sounds very tough and even judgmental, right? But I, I want you to think of what it looks like for maybe an outside world. Because you see, that's what we're being compared by, right? Those who are on the outside, they're looking to see what our lives display and how that we act, right? Do we think that maybe our lives send a mixed signal? Because I want you to know there, there are tons of people who are truly seeking the real thing. 
all around us, right? Right around us. And I, I want you to I want you to understand once again that I'm I'm not saying that I don't make mistakes and my actions don't display something else that people will quickly jump upon and even bring about, right? I, I want you to understand that I am at fault just as much as every single one of you, right? But we have to realize how important our daily walk is. You see, this, this church that, that Paul is really paying attention to here in Corinth, right, they've, they've even started to turn on him and even begin to question his authority as an apostle. And Paul now is saying, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute to all this other, all this other time I've been, I've been good enough to help lead you to the Lord, to invest my life into yours. And now I, I want you to see that it's time that you must check yourselves, right? A spiritual checkup has to take place. He's asking them to basically judge themselves by the same standard they were judging him. How many times do we use that? In our own life do we hold other people to a different standard than we do ourselves I used that this week right growing up and um, not being in church at all like we should have been but some of my dads and I, I pick on him about that statement a lot uh, and I love him right and forgive him right it's all good but his famous line was don't do as I do do as I say There's nowhere in the Bible, right? Christ says that we're to be doers of the word. And how, how easy that is. We got kids on the loose. Come on, let him come to the altar. That's what Jesus says. Let him come, Corey. <laughs> we could probably learn from that. We could probably learn from that. He's growing. But how how easy it is sometimes that we'll we'll start holding people to a standard that that we're not willing to live by. And, and Paul is not saying that. He's not saying that I'm above you. Paul's claiming I'm the chief sinner amongst you. He's saying, but I want you to hold your standard to who's living on the inside of you, Jesus Christ. So this morning, right, I want you to hear this from my, word, from my very mouth, right? I'm not telling you to hold your standard to me, right? I'm saying I want you to hold your standard to Jesus Christ. I want you to hear this, this bold question, right? Are you walking to the, to, the, to the gospel that you profess? Is your life on display according to what you say you believe, right? Just as much as we want to see baby Charlie grow into this mature, healthy, uh, grown-up man, right? Paul's wanting that, that very thing for these believers here at Corinth. And guess what? I, I want to see this very thing right here at Bethlehem, right? That we would all grow together as mature believers. And for every one of us, we're all at different spots, right? And some of us are, are newborns, right? And some of us are in the terrible twos, right? And some of us are in our teenage years. And some of us are further down the road. And it's okay, we're not calling you to be at the same spot. We're calling you to grow wherever you're at, to continue to move forward. I, I want more than just simply growing into this mature believer that, that, that has this concept or this idea that I've reached the status, right, that I've come to the point. No, I want you to see just as what Paul and just as what God's wanting, right? I want constant reconciliation, constant restoration, constant recommitting, and constant repenting in your life over and over and over that. That is the gospel. 
That's what God's calling all of us to, to do, right? And I, I don't want to set our standard too low, right? I don't want us to just make the bar to say, okay, I, I've come to this point, right? And I've, I've reached it. Now I can just cruise on, on, on cruise control the remainder of our lives. No, I, I want to see people, right? God wants to see people confess their sins, right? To repent, to turn from them, to run to Christ, to grow in their faith in Christ, to see them start attending church, right, to plugging into a body of believers to become this mature person in Christ, in their faith, and to walk out the remainder of their days this side of eternity in faith in Christ. That's exactly, come on, Charlie, I love your amen in now. been looking at doing a couple of things and looking at some tickets and some other stuff for the kids and looking at how tickets play out, right? How many people have bought any tickets to a sporting event, concert, or anything? Come on, audience participation this morning, right? Right? Even if you've bought tickets for a plane, right? Where are the most expensive tickets at? Front row. Front row. Food for thought this morning. <laughs> Why in the church do we try our best to sit in the back row? <laughs> when everything else in life, we want the best seat in the house. That ought to preach somewhere today, right? That ought to, that ought to just make us see, right? And that's, I know, I know, right? My, my mind is so warped sometimes, right? And I, I see that right, right out in the open that God knows the worst about me and he knows the worst about you. And guess what? He still loves you. He still loves you, right? He still even knows how sick and twisted our hearts are and how that we think and the things that we do, right? And he says, I still love you. I still want to, to, to be a part of you, right? I, I still have chosen you. I still want to work in and through you, right? And this checkup this morning, God's Word, it's wanting to do something, right? It's like looking into a pitch black room. Now, how many of you get up maybe before your spouse does in a dark room? I know I'm, I've got last thing, right? Anybody in here? Kimberly is the lightest sleeper ever, right? And I mean, she is hateful in the mornings. Just kidding. If you make a, I mean, I can't even, I can't even roll out of bed, right? And she's mad at the world because I made a noise getting out of the bed. And, and I don't know how else to get out of the bed. I've tried to roll out, jump out, right? I've tried every way, slide out, and I can't get out of there in, in quiet motion, right? But, but I've gotten pretty good at walking in the dark because you dare can't turn on no light, right? <laughs> that would be an ultimate no-no. Just think about our, our, our spiritual checkup as just like walking in this pitch black room. Most of us probably can navigate our own houses pitch black, right? Just, just think about how much of that room that you cannot see because of the darkness, Right? There's things over here, right? There's a doorway. I still run into a doorway that I've walked through for the last four years several times, right? I still sometimes miss it and run right into the door face, right? But just think, uh, think about that dark room for a moment, right? And think about how, how we bring light into that room and how much that it allows us to see so much better. So just like, just like this morning inside of our bathroom, right, our bathroom window was open and the, the, the curtains weren't pulled closed and that breeze was coming in through there, but that little bit of light. Didn't have to have my cell phone out and trying to see a little bit to kind of get through where I was going. Think about how when we bring that light into the room that we don't, we don't have to strain our eyes, right? We don't have to focus on the darkness right in the room. Just think about in our own lives when Christ brings light into our lives. See, that, that darkness is exposed. 
right? And, and no longer is, is it there, right? Because Christ is beginning to shine on that one, right? And I, I, want you to, I want you to see that's exactly of why God has placed you in this dark world that we're living in. Not, not just to simply expose the darkness, but to rid the darkness, right? For you to be the light, right? For, for you to be able to see and understand how important it is that, that, that when we start focusing on ourselves, right? Just really intently focusing on ourselves, of how much that that's really not exactly of everything that God wants us to do. Right? We've got we've to almost go to that window, right, and open up the blinds and let the light in. It's exactly of what, of what Christ is wanting to do, right, that we must let the light of Christ into our souls, right? He, he's saying that, that Jesus Christ is in you. I hope that you will find out that we have not failed the test, but we pray to God that you may not do wrong. Something so important, church. I want you to hear the, the word of God from the, from the voice of God, right? Let the light of the gospel of grace and everything that it has help you in this moment to examine yourself as it begins to pull away all of those things. Let God begin to reveal it this morning. And there's just four quick words, right? I promise you. Hold tight. Proportion. Right? I've, I've heard this word used so many different ways this week, right? But I, I, I heard it from one commentary. He says, every time we look to ourselves, we should look at Christ 10. Let us look more to Christ than we do ourselves. The right proportion. Just think, just think about that. How much time that we spend on ourselves... <laughs> we should be looking to Christ way more. Pardon, right? Such a wonderful word. A word that maybe we have a hard time grasping unless you, you've experienced it in the way that God intended, right? God knows you and he still loves you, right? He's forgiven you of our sins and guess what? He'll, he'll cleanse you from all of unrighteousness. All that we must do is confess them. Confess our sins, right? And God will pardon us. Sure, ultimate pardon, right, was paid for on the Christ, but that should be an, uh, an everyday thing, right, that we're doing, asking God to rid us of what's, whatever is not of him. How about perception? And I talk about this one a lot with young people today, especially because now everybody walks with earbuds in their ear and they're scrolling all at the same time and yet they're telling me that they're working while doing that. Man, I have a hard time believing that because most of the time they're doing this. Pretty sure you can't work while leaning. Now, unless your job is holding up this podium. All it takes is one moment for someone to see someone doing that, and the perception is you don't do anything. Come on. Perception is everything. The most important things about ourselves, guess where they're found? They're found on the inside of us, right? If Jesus Christ is on the inside of us, that's the most important thing about us. Not the, not the way that we look or the way that we dress, right? But looking to Christ, his death, his resurrection, right? Then we begin to see how precious, how honored we are to God, right? If we truly realize in whose image we were created and what we're carrying around with us, right? Then we'll begin to see whose that we are and who that we belong to and how serious the sin that we're in is towards God. Perception is everything, I know, I know there's way more that I could talk about, right? But I, I want you to understand how serious that, that aspect is. It doesn't make it right if someone perceives something. It doesn't change the fact of their thoughts already in their mind. Power is the last one, right? Not as a tyrant or not as a burden. 
You see, sometimes we think of God as a judge, right? He's ruling and reigning down over us, and he's always dropping that hammer or that gavel. And if we're not careful, we begin to think of our Christian life as almost as a burden. You mean... Right? We, we begin to think that it's out of a have to instead of a, a want to. And just as Paul is, is talking about, he he's constantly says, or he says it twice inside of just these verses, right? We're glad when we are weak and you are strong. You see, it's, it's not about pouring buckets or throwing water onto the fire this morning, right? But I, I want to encourage you to fan, to fan that flame, right? Just as we're starting to unpeel in the study that we're doing on, uh, on Sunday nights, right? I want us to look and see where God's at work all around us in our lives. And guess what? I want us to partner up and move forward with him. I want us to be a part of what God's doing. And guess what? For every single one of you, it's different. I'm not telling you that you've got to do X, Y, and Z. And if you don't, shame on you. I'm saying where God's at in your life, he's working. He's working. Hook up with him. Partner up. Become part of it. Do what God's calling you to do right where you're at. Why? Because there's something so wonderful, right? He says that the Lord has given for me for building up and for not tearing down. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Aim, aim for restoration. It's what we should constantly be doing is reconciling the best way that we can, not constantly dividing. Newsflash, you're not going to see restoration on CNN or Fox News or MSNBC. Quit watching that junk. I spend time watching this. And you'll see all kinds of restoration. You'll see all kinds of comfort for one another and agreeing with one another. Come on now, I know it blew some of your minds. News is okay. Just do it in proportion, right? Do it in moderate consumption. It's the best news, right? Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. If we want to see God doing what we know that he's capable of and that he's wanting to do through us, guess what we've got to do? We've got to do these things. We've got to aim for restoration. We've got to comfort people. We've got to agree with one another. We've got to live in peace. And I know, I know that's hard, right? Because there's so much else that's being promoted. This morning, church, in these final greetings, the grace of Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's the design. God is wanting to equip you with everything that you need when you leave from these doors. But there has to be a, a moment of reckoning, if you will. There has to be a moment where we allow God to expose all of those things, right, regardless of how big or how small or how many or how few there are in our life. He wants, to be, wants us to be rid of all that. I truly want us to be what God's calling us to be. I truly want this church to be what it's designed to be. And that is a hospital for the sick. For people that don't know Jesus would come and know all about Jesus. That the more that we come, the more that we would grow closer to him and the more that we would grow closer than him, that we would not be satisfied with what we do know, that we would strive for more. And that we wouldn't just want to do it here on Sunday mornings or just on Wednesday nights or on Sunday nights or Tuesday nights or Thursday nights. We want to do it every waking moment of our life. And I'm going to tell you, if you sign up for that, you better be ready to risk it all. Because it's going to cost you dearly. But I assure you, it will be much better than whatever your money market account or your 401k or whatever stock that you may have or whatever pension that you may be drawing or whatever the stock market's doing or whatever that the stockyards is bringing. 
all of eternity is yours. So I just want to pray, God, we, we come to you right here in this moment. Truly, truly humbled by, by your words, Lord, knowing that, that just as Paul stated, Lord, that I, I am the chief sinner amongst this group, Lord, and I know that my life is not perfect, Lord, and I, I wish to confess right now, Lord, of those things, any and all that are not pleasing and honoring to you, that, Lord, you would, you would continue to rid my life of it that you would continue to make me first and foremost the husband that you've called me to be. Secondly, Lord, that you would, you would continue to grow me and make me the, the father that you've called me to be. And then, Lord, I, I pray that you would help me to be uh, this pastor, this overseer, this shepherd that you've called me to for this local body. Lord, I, I want to continue to take heed lest I fall. So, Lord, just as I, I've had time to reflect on my, my own my own spiritual checkup right now, Lord, I'm praying that for all people, so whether here and now or later on, Lord, that may be watching, that, that right now would be a moment and a time, Lord, that as you've begun to already do that examination that Lord those things that that your light is shedding upon in, in the darkness of our lives Lord that right now as soon as they're brought to our minds that that we wouldn't we wouldn't flip the switch again Lord that we wouldn't shut those curtains Lord but we would do the exact opposite that we would uh, allow your light to just bring it to to full surface that, it, that, Lord, we would allow your grace and your mercy not only to, to expose it, Lord, but for, for your grace and your mercy to get rid of it. You see, people are, are looking for something real. They're not looking for something dressed up or made up or put on. They want to see people with real issues, real problems, living out a daily walk with Christ. That as we stumble and as we fall, we don't wallow in it, that we don't blame it on someone else, that we simply confess and turn from it and turn towards you. That, Lord, we're not asking for people to come a certain way. Lord, we're, we're asking them to come just as you did to just leave right where they're at and for them to come exactly as they are. And Lord, we know that you'll take care of the rest. So Lord, right now for this moment, we're, we're, we're asking you to do what, what only you and spirit can possibly do. So I, I just pray as this time goes before us, Lord, that we would spend it wisely, that we would use it the way that you are pressing upon our hearts and that we would be completely and totally obedient to that. And if that means that we spend time in prayer down front or in our seats or if we grab someone, ask them to pray with us or for us or, or however that plays out, Lord, we, we want to be good stewards of this time right now. So, Lord, just, just be with us. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, just be obedient in this moment, right? Respond how the Lord is leading you. If you need special prayer, right, we want you to come. Be a part of that.